Remember this? It's the finale of 2000's X-Men, and Rogue has been captured by Magneto, I who wants to exploit her power to turn all humans into I mutants. thought it was cool when I had all one. All in all, pretty typical Magneto stuff, and yet the plot, like Eric's machine, is literally revolving around Rogue. So how did we yeah. go from that to this silent cameo in Days of Future Past a mere 14 years later? How could a character start off so integral to a franchise and yeah. end up being treated like an embarrassing ex not even four movies later? Th You're gutted when she was out. Yeah, I I really like Rogue. Uh, I was I was a big fan of Rogue. Um, and I could never understand why she just saw it faded out into the into the background. Because she was getting her she has a, her character arc was increasing over the films and then she just wasn't there. This is a two-pronged answer. The comics she should have been and movie the politics. Mold, yeah. Despite occupying a large amount of narrative real estate in comics, throughout the 1990s, Rogue's arc ran out of gas. She stopped being one of the go-to story-driven characters. After Chris Claremont was removed from the X-Men in the mid-90s, no one other than Claremont really knew what to do with her. She just kind of coasted into the 2000s on nostalgia for the great highs the character had enjoyed under his tenure as a writer. Because sometimes a franchise's need to get bigger with each installment leads to once essential characters That's with nowhere is. to go. Yeah, you he's can't keep inviting people to Why a party and expect every guest to be treated equally. But how could this happen to Rogue, a fan See, favorite she character was cool and here. integral member of the X-Men team? He looked young. Yeah, how well, could she he end up with less well, time than Mystique? To answer that, we have to go back to the beginning. The year 2000 was an exciting time to be a Marvel fan. The company had narrowly survived a bankruptcy and was seeing a resurgence because of potential movie adaptations. Blade. It was two years after Blade, which proved that I not only could Marvel movies that be scene actually in entertaining, like the but they could best also be scene profitable. Ever. And now we were getting to an X-Men movie with Patrick Stewart as Professor X. Fan casting was coming to life. The X-Men were coming to the big screen and it was looking good. No mm. one was thinking about the comics at this point, though, and how they had basically stopped laying creative track for future adaptations. This will come into play later. Claremont, did I read the comics? Known for his com um, no, I've. I'll be honest. I have never read. I do, I have never read a single comic book. I am sorry. I have never read one. I did read the Beano a couple of times when I was very, very young, uh, but I did watch all the X Men cartoons. And the Spider-Man cartoons, and the Batman cartoons, and the He-Man cartoons, and I loved all those. Those were all wonderful. Hmm. Complex depictions of women characters piloted the X franchise to being the highest selling See, comic the, on the market. The the one thing, the the only thing that I had an issue with was Rogue from the cartoon and Rogue in the movie were completely different. And they looked completely different. And I, I felt quite let down by that. They, they saw like half made an effort with her and didn't really go the full length to make her more like she was in the comic books. And I think if they had made her more like the comic books... If they had made her more like the comic books, I think she would have done, been a lot more popular and the would have most probably kept her in, personally during his almost 20 year time writing Marvel's Merry Mutants. However, after creative differences, Jim Lee saw him pushed off of the 1992 relaunch of Objectiveless X-Men number one, the highest selling comic of all time. The line lost focus and drastically dipped in quality. Of course, the movie execs weren't worried about this. They were only concerned with making one good movie. However, the fact that creators like Fabian Essiesa, Scott Lobdell, and Rob Liefeld just didn't have a clear mind story though. sense dialogue chops, or intimate knowledge of the intricate plotting required to balance the ever-expanding cast is not only a direct reason why the late 90s x so many characters were so they? bad, but also why Rogue specifically was sidelined. General audiences were pretty unfamiliar. See, there's Rogue. She looks so cool, man. She looks so cool. I mean, Cyclops, yeah, he was pretty much the same in the movies. Beast was almost identical in the movies. They had a lot of trouble uh, with uh, Remy Lobdell, uh, but the one film when he was in it, uh, I thought it was brilliant, <clears throat> when he was in the Wolverine film. Um, yeah, and they did, I just, Ro just wasn't anything like that. It's, and she had a really strong southern accent, I think it was. Familiar with Jack Kirby's perennially beset upon mutants, 
Their only major exposure, outside of the comic book world, was Chaim Saban's X-Men the Animated Series. So the producers were smart to have a character as an entry point. Think Neo in The Matrix. So who did they use to introduce us to the wild world of the uncanny X-Men? Through Rogue, the very character that is going to be pushed aside rapidly. In X-Men, we have a prologue that sets up the world of the mutants and the central conflict between Professor X and Magneto. We meet yeah. Marie D'Encanto, a.k.a. Rogue. One reason you fans could expect hot. big things yeah, from the character is that she was being played by Anna Paquin, an actual Oscar <coughs> winner for her role in the piano. And after Patrick Stewart and Halle Berry, Paquin was one of the biggest names on the call sheet. An actor of her caliber in the role seemed to indicate she big just things vanished. to come. And yeah, she did vanish movie, after this, didn't the she? fans' wishes were fulfilled. In the first act of the movie, Rogue accidentally puts her boyfriend into a coma and runs away, bumping into Wolverine. And then they have to go on the run, leading the two of them to meeting the X-Men. The important thing is that the movie wouldn't work without Rogue. It's through her that we are introduced to the world of mutants. Mm. We ask the questions we would want to ask, like, how do the X-Men work? She's also a young woman, sympathetic and rightly horrified by her powers elements that make it easy for the audience to relate with her. And then at the end of the movie, her power absorbing abilities are central to the plot. For Rogue fans, it was exciting to see that she was a big deal in the movie because of how important she became in the book. And she could fly. Fans had every reason that never to happened. hope that the sequels would have Rogue level up and get super strength, flight, a snazzy jacket, and a romance snazzy with Gambit. jacket. Unfortunately, with each movie, Rogue became less and less integral to the story. X2 has her around for some big scenes, but you could remove her from the story entirely, and nothing would change at all. And still no new powers. In X-Men The Last Stand, she actually takes a cure for her mutant powers, and we have never been further away from the on-screen rogue that we all expected. And then in Days of Future Past, this. A blink if you miss it moment if there ever was one. And yes, they released a rogue cut of Days of Future Past that yeah. included some additional scenes of her rescue and healing Logan's mind, but none of it, it felt very hollow when they brought her back for this particular thing. Um, it would have been good. They, they had so many people there. Why not have her in for the whole thing? Why not bring her back for all of it? You know? She brought in as a... She was used as a tool to make Logan go back. And that was it. None of it felt essential in an already over two-hour movie. In a feature on the Rogue Cut more. disc, yeah, producer right. Hutch Parker explained, None of us wanted to see that sequence go, but that was the storyline. Because it was so self-contained, it really was its own separate mission, that it actually could be lifted with the least amount of negative impact on anything that came before or after. So even in the Rogue Cut of the movie, her presence is pretty pointless. Rogue seemed to be in the sequels out of a sense of obligation. In essence, she really never became Rogue at all. You could blame that partially on the fact that Fox didn't have the rights to the Miss Marvel character. In the comics, Rogue levels up because God, she absorbs Miss Marvel's powers. We all powers love Miss Marvel, don't we? It all happened in Avengers Annual Issue Number 10, when Miss Marvel, aka Carol Danvers, went up against Mystique, who was Rogue's adopted mother. In order to protect Mystique, Rogue saps Carol. Since they couldn't put Miss Marvel in the movies, Rogue had no way to get super strong or the power of flight. This is also to say nothing of the fact that after her golden heyday of being written by Claremont, Rogue struggled to maintain the spotlight. After the romance between her and Gambit was resolved, she was stripped of her powers for a time, which the fans hated. Then she was made the leader of X-Men Legacy, which has a cult following but never really broke out. She also See, I didn't know any of this. featured in either Morrison or Quietly's new X-Men, a run specifically targeted at fans of the films of Joss Whedon and John Cassidy's Astonishing X-Men meant to be a prestige return to form. She just wasn't there for the two defining reboots of the team, which left filmmakers with little to draw from. Weird, isn't and then of course, there's Hugh. Besides Hugh. copyright issues, there was another elephant in the room that kept Rogue from achieving her full potential in the movies. Hugh Jackman. Although Jackman was a veritable unknown when he was first cast in the movie, his charismatic performance would make him the movie's breakout star, a worldwide superstar, and the face of the franchise. He was a bigger part yeah. of the movies and the team than he ever was in the comics. Wolverine so rocks. far, Jackman's still yeah. the only member of the original movie to get a solo film. In fact, he got three. One of which was great. One's okay, and one they don't talk about. 
So between copyright issues and Wolverine's popularity with audiences, Rogue never stood a chance. But the X-Men movies aren't the only franchise to have forgotten about a cast member. Yeah. Part of the reason... They, yeah, when they rebooted it, they messed up a lot of the characters. And a lot of the timeline. Isn't, uh, I think X-Men's known for being the most messed up timelines um, possible in any franchise. It's like they're just all over the place. Reboots, recastings, reshootings. It's just everything. It's so bad. And that characters could be forgotten is because each sequel has to be bigger than the one before it. And usually that means adding more cast members. And for every minute of runtime given to a new character that's added, there's that much less time for everyone else. Like the Alien movies, Look at they're those merciless cool. to any character that isn't played by Sigourney Weaver or Michael Fassbender, killing off beloved characters like Newt, Reese, and Shaw in between actual movies. These poor- I wouldn't say Shaw was beloved. Souls didn't even get the luxury of being killed on screen. The Star Trek Next Generation movie struggled to focus on anyone that wasn't Picard or Data. In a TV show, there's time to focus from character to character over 20 plus episode seasons, but it's easy for your Geordies or Crushers to get lost in the move to the big screen. So what's the lesson here? Maybe that the very characters that help kick off a franchise can sometimes end up with a sort of Pyrrhic victory. The X-Men movie success led to sequels, which led to the need for more mutants and that meant less time for Rogue. Add to that the copyright issues with Miss Marvel that sapped Rogue for they any kept potential growth. Anyway. Yeah, I, I agree. Jackman superstardom eclipsing everyone else. The movies, like Rogue... We, we, all, we all know that we were all waiting for Rogue to get to the point where she could fly and do even more things and have even more powers. We are all waiting for that. In number three, we are waiting for that. But they just gave up. They just stopped uh, giving them more powers. Uh, it was it was it was sad. It was weird. I don't know why. Um, I but we were all wanting it, so kept absorbing more and more star power until something or someone had to give, and that someone was Rogue herself. And well, that's it for today's episode. If you enjoyed this one, press the like button down below, and if you haven't done so yet, please also hit yeah, the subscribe, please subscribe button. to the channel. Please. On the screen right now are hopefully two or more videos. Click on either of those, and hopefully, I'll see you for the next video. That, uh, that one looks good. The real reason one of the biggest villains in the film just disappeared. I think we should watch that one, personally. What do you think? Yeah? Fair enough.